anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, arcane devices and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. So, hi guys, uh, we're back for another unboxing. Myself and John have decided to go for a little more World War II. Today, we have... We have the Russian BT-7. A beautiful little tank. Yeah, a fascinating little tank in on itself. It's cute. It's, well, it's the only way I can really describe it. You really want to call it cute? I uh, guess when you have the two show, lights... Let me show the box under camera. The, that yeah. is a cute tank. The two lights above the, the gun make it quite frog-like, I think. <laughs> I don't know, it's just got a cute little face to it. Mm -hmm. Let's crack open the box while yep. John tells us a little bit about the history of this particular vehicle. Right, well the BT-7 was basically, in my opinion, was the tank that basically made the Russians go, Christie suspensions, good, fast tanks, good, mm. and that led on towards the T-34 later on. Yeah. This was one of the first tank series where they used J. Walter Christie's suspension system. Yeah, if I remember correctly, hadn't he t taken it to a, uh, a tank show to actually show off how well it worked, and everybody looked at it and went, no, you're insane. Well, he, he um, took one of his Christie prototypes to the American military, yep. who watched the trials, mm -hmm. uh, along with a couple other countries that were watching it, Russia being one of them. Yeah. And um, the Americans went, we don't have the doctrine for a fast tank, we don't like fast tanks, we like small tanks with lots of machine guns. Fair enough. The cult of the machine gun, a very silly thing to do. Um, but the Russians looked at it and thought, well, the main points of the Christie tank were that the suspension was easy. Mm -hmm. The suspension was nowhere near as complicated as some of the other systems that were coming up. Lots of leaf spring and lots of weird stuff going on. Yeah. Um, well, how does Christie suspension actually work then? Right, well, Christie suspension is basically, on the inside of the tank you have a box. Uh-huh. Inside this box is a spring, and the spring is about three foot long, something like that. Okay. Inside that's a shock absorber. That hooks onto a swing arm on the side of the tank. Mm -hmm. uh, the swing arm will have, uh, I believe it's about 14 inches of travel. Okay, so that's, that's pretty damned effective whenever you can be shifting yep. one of the wheels 14 inches. Let's yep. actually put the hull under close camera. Mm -hmm. So you can see this. Right. So if I can find close camera, yep. there we go. So you, so you have these four road wheels here. Mm -hmm which actually have a 14 inch travel on them. Yeah, about a 12 to 14 inch travel on those mm. wheels. That's why the gap would be so big from the top of the wheel to the top of the mud guard. Yeah. When you see these things in real life, they look really tall. Ah. Um, and that's why they, ha they have to accommodate the spring on the inside of the hull and they yeah. have to accommodate for the, the suspension travel. Yeah, now from the front, it does, there's the cute little face of it with the two little headlights. <laughs> it, it just looks so happy and eager to me. Well, it certainly looks eager considering that some of these tanks in the BT series, possibly the BT-5, maybe the BT-7, mm. could hit somewhere up to 50 miles an hour. These are really fast Is little things. Is that off-road? Yeah, on yeah, these things could do that off-road. Right. Well, I mean, like, the, the actual model itself is really nicely detailed because mm -hmm. you've got all the nice little rivets, a couple of little bits of scarring here and there. Yeah. I assume this is fuel storage? Uh, it's, uh, believe it or not, I don't think it is. It might be, but they're usually storage bins. Okay, um, uh, we then come around to the actual engine deck, which is chock full of detail with your Pioneer tools and stuff. Yep, so you have all your Pioneer kit, or as the British will call it, CES kit. Yep. Um, you have the, the large engine grill uh, set above the radiator. Yep. And your whole engine compartment, which takes up, you know, just about, about half of the vehicle and Yeah, in it's this about instance. 50%. Uh -huh. Now, this is an early war tank. This is, yeah. This so I'm guessing that's why we have a rather puny little turret. A very small little turret. These things were designed pre-war yeah. and were built by their thousands ah. in the pre-war. Uh, when they started to use these things alongside their other light tank, the T-26 and stuff like that, yeah. these things were fast, so these were the flanking ah. idea. Because Russia at the same time had a doctrine very similar to Blitzkrieg. In fact, right. Blitzkrieg was based off the Russian doctrine, which yeah. was called Deep Battle. Yes. Which in involved a lot of armoured units moving in, flanking, and the infantry following up. Yes. Uh, and the BT personifies that. Very fast, very mobile. Mm -hmm. But because it's fast and mobile, it suffers the lack of the third important part of tank warfare. Yeah. Armament. Yes. You have a fast tank, so it has little armour. Yeah. And a small gun. Yes. At the time, though, this has a 40, 47... Millimeter gun. Yeah, which I assume is this little piece here. Yes, that little piece. 
This was completely ineffective circa 1941-42. Okay. Up until that point, fine. Because even German tanks were getting penetrated by a gun that caliber. That's fair enough. You had Panzer 1, 2 and 3. So and basically, Soviet. at the time, this was as good as any other tank in the world. Quite possibly, yeah. Um, as the Russian design doctrine goes, it's very crude. Mm. It's thrown together. Driver, driver and crew comfort are just completely not yeah. there. Well, I don't know. The front hatches on this look better than the T-34 hatch. You could probably get out of this faster, but because, <laughs> because you have so much engine and fuel behind you, you may not have a chance. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm noticing on the turret, the actual uh, commander and gunner's hatches are quite small. They are. And this is a three-man tank. So you yeah. have commander, uh, loader, and driver. Right. You have no gunner, because the commander's the gunner. Ah, right, I see. So the commander, this is how insane early war tanks are, and how ridiculously funny they can be, because mm -hmm. they're badly designed. You have the commander, who has to command his tank, yeah. plus the rest of his squadron. Yeah. He has to service the main gun, yeah. so he has to aim, fire the main gun. Yeah. He also has to service the coaxial machine gun, load, aim, and fire it. Right while doing everything else a tank commander has to be doing, being aware of his situation around him, being aware of what his tanks are doing, being aware of what his crew's doing. Right. Silly question. Would this have been one of the tanks where you would have actually had the commander out the top with the flags? Yes, because this wouldn't have had a radio set. Yeah, so that's even more fun. So, so when he's not servicing the gun, he stood outside with signal flags going like... You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you then get your two little hatches to go mm -hmm. on top, which are a nice little metal component. Mm -hmm. Good detail. Yep. And then we have a few other bits and pieces here. So yes, these two lights take... that you're going to be showing off here are two lights that sit above the, the main gun. gun. Yep. So I assume they will hook on down over there. Yes. Which is it's quite handy. You've also got a couple of little towing eyes to, to mm -hmm. add on to it. A couple of shackles which probably go on to the front or the back. Yep. We then get our commander himself. Mm -hmm. who I think actually you may need to give him a little bit of a trim to actually fit inside the turret. But yep. that's, that's not a bad thing. That, that represents yeah. you having to, <gasps> to get yeah. into it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'll assume it was all skinny tank commanders. Oh, yeah. The, I, I yeah. think somewhere there's a piece of paper that says Russian tank crews couldn't be over five foot two or something. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a lovely little two piece model. So mm -hmm. you've got his main body with his binoculars up. Yep. And then you've got his spare arm. His spare arm, which is probably either signaling or resting down on the. The yeah. turret rim. I'm sure you can model them however you please. Yeah, pretty there much. There are then two other little pieces. I'm not sure where they go yet, but we will find out when we build this, mm -hmm. which is beside the gun, you have these two little sticks of metal. Those are your exhaust. Ah! Which go onto the back of the engine grill. Uh, where? Onto the back of the engine grill. Oh, so those two little... These two little dots here. Ah, I That's see. That's your two exhaust pipes. Ah, I see. So, yeah, it's, it's Russian, it's rough, but it's just a fun tank. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because I, I love playing this vehicle in things like uh, World of Tanks and War Thunder mm -hmm. because it's just fun as hell to be blitzing along off-road at 50 mile an hour. Yeah, it's right. a lot of fun. Yeah, right, John, shall we take this away quickly and build it just to yeah. let people see what it's like because there's not too many pieces to it, Nope. but it is nice to see these things completed. So guys, myself and John are going to go for a quick break here mm -hmm. while he builds this, and we'll see you in a minute. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsung Hub on beastofwar.com. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastofwar.com. And we're back. Right. Uh, we've built our BT7. We so have. Here it is. No, the build was... Incredibly easy on this. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, si since they've started doing the, the tracks and the wheels all on one piece now with the hull on mm -hmm. some of the tanks, like it's far easier. Yeah, well, I mean, like I will say, cleaning up between the wheels got a little bit fidgety just mm -hmm. in a couple of really tight spots, but you know, just we hobby file, bit of a blade, job done. Yep. Yeah, the really fiddly bit to put on was the two little towing eyes at the back, just because they're so small. Yeah. But uh, what we're using at the minute is super glue and a wee touch of activator, does the job beautifully. Yeah. Right, so John, where did these see service? Uh, these things seen service from the beginning of the war right through uh, with Soviet service. I think it sort of ended in 42, 43. Okay. Because they were completely useless against what the Germans were bringing to the field at that point. So Panzer IV, Panther, Tiger, King yeah, Tiger. Yeah, once, once the late model Panzer III and the, the Panzer IVs were rolling about with the long barrel 75s, these things hadn't a chance. Yeah. Um, their service history spans beyond 
mm -hmm. that you know they were exported a lot to um, any of the Soviet allies. Yeah. Um, so China, uh, any of the other communist sort of yeah okay uh, countries took a lot of them on board as well. In That's the right. Of the war. Well, I mean, like actually looking at it for the the hull design, you can see there's some sloped armor here and there, here and there, but there's a lot of shell traps. So if you plant one right in at the headlamp, yeah, well, you're gonna shred something there. Well, and considering this is all just tin work, yeah, you know, that would rip off. It's not so much a shell trap because that bit of hull does angle out from itself. Mm, but would it not punch through on through into your road, wheel, road wheels and stuff? Maybe it shred a track? Doesn't matter if it hasn't killed you. Actually, a fair point. The only problem is that BT-7 has little to no armour anyway. Ah, right. It's not stopping anything bigger than... Uh, let me see. Well, if, maybe if you're very, very lucky, a 50 calibre round. Really? A, yeah. A 50 cal could punch that. That's Quite possibly. It's, that's scary. It's not a very good tank as far as armor goes. That's why it was so fast. Mm. Um, we see that's that's the trifecta you always see in tank warfare mm -hmm. is you have armor, mobility, and firepower. Yeah. You can never have all three. Well, you can't have a decent amount of all three. Mm. Um, T-34 is as close as they came to that, really, to be yeah. honest, during the Second World War. Yeah, not to mention ease of manufacture for the T-34, because they just churned them right out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, although I do remember you telling me about a lovely little piece of design detail for the T-34 for the turret controls, was it? If we're going we're gonna to ramble here. Yeah, so we're going to whack lyrical. For a a risk any, pause the video, get yourself a cup of tea, come back and enjoy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the traverse mechanism on T-34 is twofold. It's electric and hand. Mm -hmm. uh, both controls are on the same control system. On the same control system. Mm -hmm. So you pull the handle out. Mm -hmm. uh, it flips out, actually. Right. Like that, so you hand crank. Yeah. If you flip the thing back vertical and do that with it, that's your electric traverse. Yeah. So it's just a, an on-off switch for the electric traverse. Yeah. So basically, for something that was quite possibly one of the roughest made things you could imagine, it was this beautiful little piece of technology that yeah. worked really well. Yeah. So the, this one technical artist just went, "I'm just going to put something nice there." That, there you go. That shows you the Russians' simplification of a complicated system. Yeah. You know, Sherman Par or yeah. Power traverse, hand traverse, tiger, yeah. power traverse, hand traverse. Yeah. And Russia was like, par, <laughs> like, hand traverse, power traverse. <laughs> it was like, yeah. easy. <laughs> you don't have to worry about two hands with it. Yeah. But I mean, like, I think in game, I would maybe take one of these early war just to have a nice little piece of armor on the field. They're very effective in early war mm. because considering that when these things were on the field and mm. effective on the field, yeah. Germany had no idea how it was really doing Blitzkrieg. Yeah. It, it hadn't done it a lot. Uh -huh. It worked through Europe and that, but it, wasn't really perfected when it came to Russia. Yeah. You know, still, as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't. It yeah, was. and then the Russians were just probably sending masses of these speeding down their throat. Yeah, well, the, Ru the Russian army early war wasn't that great. Uh, there's a mm. lot of guys out there, Commissar Boris for one will probably agree with me, morale, leadership and that wasn't that great at the start mm. of uh, the Russian campaign. Yeah. Because That's everyone was scared of, Sk of Stalin. Yeah, I suppose. So. I suppose. Everything was just sort of thrown at them and in piecemeal yeah, sort no, of thing. Fair enough. All right, well, guys, that's the, the BT-7 uh, fast tank mm -hmm. for your Russian forces early war. Uh, drop us a comment below, tell us what you think, and we'll see you in the next video. Venture into the dangerous dungeons of myth as a mighty hero and stand against the darkness. Visit the Myth Hub on beastofwar.com and begin your story. Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the Reconquest and fight the Scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at beastofwar.com.